Hey guys, Isaiah here from Goo Gaming, and me, Logan, and PJ are going to talk about Clifton Land's Drytron deck that he went undefeated with at the prize card event from through the decades this past weekend. Uh, we're just going to talk about what we think about the deck and about his deck choices, so let's get right into it. All right, so starting off with the list, uh, obviously we play three Diviner, and we play the three Alpha, two Delta, three Gamma, and three Zeta. It's really just a standard Drytron lineup, honestly. Yeah, it's a little bit different now because you just want bodies on the board to be able to link climb and to be able to make Baron, so you just want to have a handful of Drytron names. Yeah. Without maxing out, obviously. Um, obviously, play Scythe. This deck's just really strong with Scythe, being able to search it. Um, and with this list, you can be able to double Scythe block if you needed. And then for the Fusion Destiny package, you, he played it. Two Plasma. Basically, you just... Where, like in Drytron, they have the restriction where you cannot special summon monsters that can be normal or... I cannot be normal summoner set. And if you banish DPE and you play a card like Celestial, and like let's say your opponent DD crowed your DPE, it would force you to summon Celestial in your own turn, which in fact would lock you out of Drytron names for the entire turn because you special summoned your Celestial. Yeah, Since, basically you know, you cannot, yeah, you can't special summon the Plasma. So basically he foregoed the uh, draw two, so that would never happen to him. I'm not sure how I feel about it, but it it, it obviously works for him. Yeah, I feel like the draw, draw two is definitely powerful. I think this is more of just a, I wouldn't say scared, but just you're afraid to get locked out of your own thing. But I feel like playing in a tournament, especially a multiple round tournament, that uh, it could that, happen. It could happen, but it probably wouldn't come up enough to matter. But it could have. And he plays the Chaos Valkyria. This is different. A lot of people I don't see playing this. Uh, I guess you just play it for an extender. Uh, to do your Plus it's searchable, off. right? Yeah, it's searchable. It's searchable at the end of the day. I think a big thing is it's level 4, so with Diviner you can make uh, Baron. Honor the Rituals, uh, he plays a 1 Ben 10, a Draken Nids, a Megalith Bethor, 2 Ophiel, and 2 Fool. Um, he's not playing Idaton. Yeah, without uh, Beatrice. Uh, if you, you'll see later he doesn't play Beatrice. Without Beatrice, you don't really need Idaton as much. Um, I personally think. love the Megaliths. Uh, I think Megaliths are They're super crazy, strong. Bro. I think Megaliths, like, eventually just a pure Megalith deck will be good, but, you know, that's not... That's just off I topic, but <laughs> yeah, I just I think the Megalith cards are broken. Yeah, they're insane, especially the paw from Bethlor too. Like, it's crazy. And he he decided to side and toss. Do you guys agree with side and toss, or you think he should main it? Yeah, I I personally haven't been the biggest fan of Natasha. Uh, pretty much ever since Ben Tins went to one, I thought the card is just kind of overhyped. I know PJ has an opposite opinion of that. He really likes the card, but Natasha um, is insane, dude. It has clothes. So many games for me, and just one game just because they can steal cards. But since you're not playing Auditon in the main, I can understand not playing it, but he has it side deck. I guess, like, for time, it could come up too because it gains life as well. He just put the one call by, it's kind of understandable. Obviously, three Cyber Emergency and three Nova. I feel like yes, you just standard. have to play these cards for consistency. Uh, three Droplet. Uh, Droplet, just a really insane card this format. It's pretty good in this deck too. And they obviously plays Fusion Destiny, the one Medionis. Do you th do you think people should play just one Medionis, or should you play multiple? The only time I've wanted more than one Medionis is if I'm going up against the Virtual World and just gets banished, or like if it gets Cosmic, but it doesn't come up as much as you think. The only time it came up is like whenever you had two Eva, like you might like need the uh, second Ritual spell, but usually it didn't. I also think it's important that this deck isn't, like, super focused towards Ritual Monsters. Like, only have, Baron. Right, like, after, after turn one, I would assume you only have, like, two Rituals left in your deck, so you're not really trying to Ritual, you're just trying to Link Climb and probably kill him with Bull Sword or whatever. Right. And he chose to play two Tactics. Um, he did say that this was an MVP card in this deck. Um, a lot of people aren't playing Tactics right now. I think the card's pretty cool. I like it in this deck because you can't, like... Sometimes you can't make uh, the floor by your uh, by your fifth summon, so it's important to rip like nib out of the hand and like stuff like that. Tactics is crazy when it resolves one of those powerful cards in the game. If it resolves Plus, it's draw two, and like you don't have enough names as well. It's really good against the Brave Engine, I think, because they're True. always going to Griffin negate there, and then you can just activate tactics, bait out another interruption, and then just proceed to combo. Moving on to his side deck, he played three Lancia and three Nib. I think they're just very strong cards in the format right now against your Oregon decks and against, uh, obviously, basically every other deck in the format. Um, and you can play both of these in this deck, and I definitely think they should be in your side deck. Yeah, you search I Lancia think, too. 
Yeah, nice. I'm kind of surprised he didn't main deck Lancia to be honest. Or at least one but, for the search. Yeah, one. especially yeah to search it and set it off Dagda. I would assume it would come up game one, but like he maybe he might just, just want to keep it clean forty. Yeah. And then, like we said before, he did decide to he did decide to side the Natasha. Um, other than time, is there anything you guys are thinking about siding this for? Uh, the Grandi matchups, stuff like Dragon Link that leave big monsters on the board. I would assume would be pretty good against. He chose a side three Dark Ruler, kind of self-explanatory. Same thing with the Harpies and the Twin Twisters and the Red Reboot. Um, just your board wipes and your back row stops. Uh, his deck can push through a lot of damage, so the Red Reboot's really good. Plus, this deck like doesn't really care about the Scythe log either, because yep. it has like Dragonus as a card. Like, card's good. Plus, with the Megalith package, you can also just end on like a pop two or three after you clear their Scythe board, <laughs> which gives you interruptions, right. which uh, you most decks cannot do. Which is a big draw to, to play a deck like this. Our right, Mumino's extra deck. Uh, he plays the DPE, the Entis, Baron, Herald, uh, Zeus, and the Nightingale for the Zeus, and the Downard as well. He also plays the two Fafnirs, kind of standard. Uh, Dagda. He's playing Boral Sword, and he's not playing Access Code. He's playing I think IP. it's important to note that you can kill with just a Drowtron name plus uh, plus Boral Sword too, which might be why he doesn't play Access Code. Yeah, it probably comes up more to play Boral Sword than does access code. I feel like you can probably fit access code in here, though. Probably DP good. plus uh, Boral Sword game access code plus uh, DP is not. That's fair. And he plays IP, a Unicorn, a Link Rebo, and a Verte. Uh, he does not play a Beatrice, which is what a lot of people play in this deck. I feel like that's what's known for Drytron. I mean, he isn't playing Otterton. If you're not playing Otterton, or he's played uh, Beatrice, vice versa. I guess without... Eva is not really needed anymore, right? Uh, I mean, you could dump could Token. Is, yeah, it's Token Collector, but he doesn't play that card. Um, sometimes it's important to get to your different names. But yeah. other than that... No other reason to play her? All right, guys, so that was Clifton Lands. Again, undefeated deck profile from through the decades this past weekend. We played for a Pros card. Uh, they actually did split top four, so we went undefeated up through top four. I think the deck's really cool. I think it's got a lot of weird tech choices and deck building ideas. Um, but shout out to Clifton Land. Shout out to Through the Decades. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Hey guys, thanks for watching our video. If you like what you saw, make sure you check out our most recent video here and our most recent vlog here. We appreciate your feedback. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share. And we hope you guys have a wonderful day.